Hello grade 11 and 12 physics learners. In today's video, we're going to be doing a past paper. It is a grade 12 past paper, but grade 11s, if you do circuits with internal resistance, you can watch this video as well. So if you want to do the past paper with me, it is November 2018, the Department of Basic Education's final exam paper. Let's jump right in. But before we do, remember to subscribe, please, for more videos like this. It really means the world when you subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and comment down below what else you want me to help you with. So we've got a circuit over here. This is the battery. The entire dotted thing is the battery. That's the EMF of the battery, 12 volts, internal resistance of 0.5 ohms. Then they also tell me that there's these two resistors in the circuit. One of them has an unknown resistance. First things first, let's just check out the circuit quickly, make sure you understand what's going on here. The circuit has a parallel connection. So the total current will flow through this part of the circuit. Total current will flow through here, and then there'll be a split over here. Some of the current will flow through the two ohms, the rest through R and then it'll join again and the total current will flow through the ammeter. The voltmeter is actually connected across the battery. When the switches in the circuit are open or when the current is not flowing, this will read the EMF, so it'll read 12 volts. As soon as the switch is closed and current is flowing through the circuit, this voltmeter reads what we call V external. Now, in my other videos in this playlist, I have gone over what EMF is, what V external is, and what V internal is. But here's a little bit of a recap. EMF is the V external plus V internal. That is how you calculate V external. That is how you calculate V internal. We can take I out as a common factor and we get the formula that you see on your formula sheets. 8.1 asks, what is the meaning of the following statement? The EMF of the battery is 12 volts. Now, when they say, what is the meaning? They're essentially trying to see if you understand what EMF is. So basically they want the definition of EMF in a way, but they want you to relate it to the 12 volts. First things first, you need to know that EMF, the definition is the energy transferred or the work done by the battery per unit charge or per coulomb charge. And that is basically where this formula comes from or where the definition comes from. It comes from this formula, work per coulomb charge. Therefore, if I tell you that the EMF of the battery is 12 volts, it means that the battery supplies 12 joules of energy or does 12 joules of work per coulomb charge or per unit charge. That is the second bullet point here is the answer to our question. Then there's another bit of information given to me. The reading on the ammeter is two amperes when switch S is open. They want us to calculate the reading on the voltmeter and then the value of resistor R. Firstly, looking at how to find the reading on the voltmeter, a quick reminder about where the voltmeter is connected. The voltmeter is connected here across the battery. So they say when the switch is open, now remember, when the switch is open, that's not the main switch of the circuit. That opening that switch does not stop the current from flowing in the circuit. That, if I open that switch, what it does is it basically just makes this branch here useless. The current won't flow through that branch. So that branch doesn't exist. So the current only flows through the battery, down here, and through this resistor. So it's a series circuit, basically. So we want to know, when that switch is open, okay, so this branch is non-existent, there's current flowing through the circuit, we want to know this reading on the voltmeter over here. Now, remember what I said earlier, that reading, that voltmeter reading, reads V external. So, how would we calculate V external? We can calculate V external in multiple different ways. The one way that we can do it is we can say, okay, cool, V is equal to I times R, and I have discussed this in my videos, but if you want to calculate V external, you have to use R external. Not R internal, R external. But do we know R external? No, because I don't know the value of R. It's unknown. So I can't calculate V external using this formula because I'm looking for V external, and I don't know R external, so this is not going to work. Another formula that you have at your disposal, it is on the formula sheet, is the following. This one over here, the EMF formula. But using this formula as it's given over here is not going to help me. The reason why is because although I have EMF, it is 12, and I know baby R is 0.5. I do not know big R, and I cannot calculate it because I don't know this resistor over here. I also don't know the current, so I have too many unknowns. It's not going to help me. 
and where's the external in that formula anyway? But what you should know is that EMF is equal to, as I mentioned earlier, V external plus V internal. Now think about that carefully. We said we are looking for the reading on the voltmeter. We're looking for this reading over here, which is V external. EMF is given to me in this um, question, it's 12. And V internal, how would you calculate V internal? Well, V internal is calculated in the following way. Remember, V external is I times R external. V internal is I times R internal resistance. You see the difference? To calculate V external, you need external resistance. To calculate V internal, you need internal resistance, which we have. So basically what I'm doing at the moment is I'm expanding this formula like this. Instead of writing V internal, I'm going to write I times baby R because V internal is equal to I times baby R. Then we fill in what we know. EMF is 12. V external is what I'm ultimately looking for. I and I just realized that we do have current, which is great. So let's just take a look quickly. Current, they told me in the sentence over here that the reading on the ammeter is two amperes when the switch is open, which means we do know current, which means I just have to quickly revisit something after this. So two times baby R 0 0.5. This method is perfectly fine though. So we know current when the switch is open. We know that. We know baby R 0 0.5. We know the EMF and we can work out V external. The external is 11 volts, which means that when current is flowing through the circuit, this voltmeter over here will read 11 volts. Remember when the switch is open, not the switch, another switch, so the main switch in the circuit, when that is open, the voltmeter would read the EMF, which would be 12 volts. When we close it, it reads V external, which is 11 volts. That means that V internal, the lost volts, is 1 volt. Now, revisiting this initial formula over here that I said earlier that we can't use, I forgot that they gave us current. If we rewrite it, EMF equals I, big R plus baby R. We know the EMF is 12. We know the EMF is 12. We also know that current is... They gave it to me two. We don't know what big R is and we know that baby R is 0 0.5. If we did it this way, we could actually end up getting big R. And then once we get big R, we can work out V external this way. So that's what's nice about circuits. There's multiple different ways. So let's do it. So how would you get big R here? You would say 12 divided by two, which is six. And you get R, big R plus 0 0.5. So big R would be six minus 0 0.5, which would be 5.5 ohms. That is the big external resistance. Then, as I mentioned earlier, we can work out V external equals I times big R. I, big I, is 2, and R is 5.5. And there we go. Same answer, 11 volts. Awesome that there's multiple ways. And then if we take a look at 8.2.2, now they actually ask us to calculate the resistance of resistor R, which I did in the previous question. If this ever happens in the exam, which as you can see, I just did it. It just happened. What I would recommend you do is you rewrite your working out. So you see, I got big R over here. I would redo that working out. Obviously, another way to get big R, if you have just worked out, say you did this first method that I did over here, and you've just worked out that your V external is 11, and then from there, you want to work out big R. This is how you would do it. So we just did our previous question. We worked out that V external is 11. From the question, I know that current is two, and we're working out big R. Big R would be 11 divided by two, 11 divided by two, which is 5.5. Ohms. Remember, you must round off the two decimals, so that's why I said five zero ohms. And there we go. Or alternatively, as I mentioned, you could use this method, the EMF formula, because we know EMF, we know the current they gave it to us, and we know baby R. We can get big R like that. Lastly, we've got an explanation question. Now, grade 11s and 12s, look at how many marks this question is. It's worth four marks. You cannot lose these marks. And also, if you know what you're doing, it's really easy. So they say that switch S is now closed. How does this affect the reading on the voltmeter? You have to choose from increases, decreases, or remains the same. So obviously, you have to choose one. So that would be one mark. And then explain the answer. That would be three marks. So switch S is now closed. 
if we close the switch, that is basically what the question is saying, we close the switch, the implication of that is that we now have two resistors in parallel. Okay, so we're adding a resistor in parallel. And this often confuses especially my grade 10s, but even my grade 11s and my grade 12s. If we add a resistor in parallel, we are actually decreasing the total resistance of the circuit. And it makes sense because we're giving the current two alternative pathways the current doesn't all have to squash and go through resistor r it has options some of it can go through the two ohm the rest of it can go through r so by adding a resistor in parallel we're actually decreasing total resistance and immediately if something happens to total resistance something will immediately as a result happen to total current because those two things are inversely proportional so as soon as you mention something about resistance you have to immediately mention something about current so if total current or sorry if total resistance decreases total current increases they do opposite things then as soon as you're done telling me about what current does immediately after that because we have internal resistance and there's EMF, we need to refer to V internal next. The total current, whatever changes are made there, immediately impacts V internal. So the way I want you to think about it is V internal is equal to I times R internal. So if current increases, if this goes up, V internal will go up. If current goes down, V internal will go down. So whatever current does, V internal does the same thing. So V internal, which is also called lost volts. So I'm going to say lost volts in brackets. Lost volts also increases. And why is that important? Because if lost volts increases, V external decreases. They do the opposite. So if V internal, if this goes up, V external must go down. Why? Because EMF is always going to be a constant. That means that EMF is never going to change. 12 volts, EMF will be 12 volts. So if I have to make V internal bigger, 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 V external will have to get smaller. And why do I care about V external? So V external will get smaller, it'll decrease. And why do I care about V external? Because V external is the reading on the voltmeter. And that is what the question asked. It said, how does this change the reading on the voltmeter? The voltmeter reads V external. So recap, total resistance decreases, total current increases. Whatever current does, V internal does the same. So V internal increases, V external decreases. And then what you actually should add in to your answer is the fact that two things are going to stay constant. EMF and internal resistance are constant. Remember, relationships only work if the other variables are constant. So ultimately your answer is decreases and this is your reason. And this is where you get marks for this question. I hope that this has been helpful. Please check out the playlist below for more practice videos on electricity circuits and all other physics and chemistry topics. I hope to see you in another video very, very soon. Bye everyone.